Hello friends, it's another beautiful day, um, this time of year for us here in the South Georgia. Um, it can go one of two ways, and fortunately this year it is quite beautiful, temperatures aren't too bad. So I just wanted to get out between my clients and have a talk today while I had a chance. And I guess today I would like to tackle the topics of self and selflessness. I don't think you can address one without having to address the other. Um, the concept of self in Buddhism is relatively nothing new. Um, in fact, you could say much of the teachings revolve around the concept of self and selflessness. But I think they can be hard to define because you really can't have one without the other. So let's address the concept of self first. Self usually centers around me, myself, and I. And I always like to think of, a, of what the uh, Buddha said on the concept of I. And that was something along the lines of, if you can show me your I, then I will believe with you. And to some level that speaks volumes of truth. The concept of self or I is always changing. You're not the same person at this age that you were just 10 years ago. You could have some of the same values, but I would challenge you to take a look and you may find that even those values which you think you've had forever have changed with time as, as you have. And so the concept of I or self, there's not much there. It's not solid ground. And that's unfortunate because in this world, many things point and guide us to self, the concept of I, mine. And we have to kind of take a, a larger look at what that means. So let's use the example of if I injured my arm severely, it's my arm, right? It's mine. And let's say I have to lose this arm, but I don't want to lose a part of me. So the arm remains attached and it decays over time. Suddenly, I look at this decaying arm and I no longer want it to be mine. I, I, that's not mine. I don't want that. And therein lies the trouble with that concept. We tend to only want to attract things that please us. And I think when we're very self-centered, that is the result we get. Now, on the other hand, we talk of selflessness. Now, what does this mean? Does, does this mean I don't exist? I have no concept of me at all? And how would I function without such concepts? I think when we refer to selflessness, we have to kind of take a broad look at things. First and foremost, we've all learned in Buddhism that we cannot help others until we help ourselves. But I do not think that this is the same concept of self as me, 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 I, I, I. I think that when we are selfless, we can see self or me or I for what it is which as I alluded to earlier, an ever-changing state of being. So that as I grow, I change. So I think when you can say you're selfless, you've taken a bigger picture. You've stepped out of the bounding box of me and I. And you see this physical body as a collection of conditions and ideas 
And as such, you see how they change and shift in time. So to be selfless is to embrace that space, to embrace that we are bigger than our ideas of me, myself, and I. That we can embrace bigger concepts with our minds, our hearts, and the way we live each day. I think when you become selfless, you have gained the ability through focusing on self to put yourself second, to let others in need come before you, yourself, and I. It's a delicate balancing act, but I think that when you are selfless, I think first and foremost, you cannot be selfless until you have focused on exactly what self is. And so as the saying goes, I cannot give you what I have not possessed myself. I think that holds just as true when we consider Buddhism and the mental states and aspects of Buddhism that encourage us to become bigger than me, myself, and I. So as you can see, the concepts of self and selfless are a delicate balancing act. And of course, the concepts of yin and yang are always brought into perspective here. And I believe it's very true in this life. We cannot have one thing without the other. Everything is a balancing act. And so when it comes to this, let us keep our concepts of self and selfless in balance. Let us love and tend to our own needs first and foremost, as we need to take care of ourselves if we are to help and guide others. And with that, my friends, I'm going to end today's walk. I encourage each and every one of you to continue your comments, your emails, and the sharing of the Daily Buddha. I, myself, appreciate that, and I hope each and every one of you have a great day. Peace and love as always, Jim.